My vision got worse since the last time we did this, so let's see how I do. Hey loves, it's A back on your screen with another one. Today I have a get ready with me blind edition for all of you who wanna know how I do my makeup every day. Let me be real with you guys. This is not my everyday makeup look. Every day all I do is mascara and eyeliner. But when I'm filming for you guys, I put on the whole thing. So we're gonna get into some things today. I hope you guys enjoy. If you do, hit the like and let's get right into it. If you haven't been on my channel before, you may not know that my secret to applying my makeup so well is actually a contact lens mirror. This dutty mirror needs to be cleaned, but this is what I use every single day because I can actually see it's 10X. I hold it all the way up. So I'll probably do my makeup on each side like this. You can kind of see what I'm doing because there is no space between me and my mirror. So the number one tip when you're visually impaired is to stay organized and categorize everything. In my makeup storage, I have three tiers of lip products. Meanwhile, everyone's wearing masks so no one can see the lip products anyway. But that way I can easily see and divide between a liquid lipstick and a lip gloss and not make that mistake. Same goes for my highlighters and my blushes, except I organize those in alphabetical order. So I'll know when I want one type of eyeshadow or one type of blush that it's gonna be closer to one corner of the container. I know it sounds like a lot, but it's less work than having to take my phone and zoom in every single time to see that I'm putting on the right thing on my face. Now that my lips are moisturized and they won't annoy me, we're gonna start by priming. You can take any primer. I usually get like these travel size or tester size primers because I don't wear foundation often. I only wear it when I'm filming with you guys. Ooh, this one smells good. It's from Tatcha. <clears throat> My favorite one so far is the YSL one because it feels like butter. But I don't think I would ever pay full price price for that. It's a little bit crazy. Now I'm going to conceal. I know some people conceal after they put on their foundation. I do both. I conceal first and I conceal again after. So. To start, I conceal here and any dark spots I have. This way, when I apply my foundation, I can see what's still poking through and go back again. Sometimes if you've noticed some of my videos, I don't even do this step, I just skip because at the end of the day, you guys know what I look like from the vlog, so there's no point in covering it all up. But if I wanna look really done done, like done 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 done, I wanna talk about insecure with you guys. So if you haven't watched this, you might wanna skip this part because we're gonna do a little spoiler sesh. But first, we're gonna apply Z foundation. So this is Givenchy. I think this is in number 370 or 350, I don't know. Everything will be listed down below once I have time to zoom in. You're just going to squirt two pumps. I love the feel of this foundation. I've been using Makeup Forever for forever. So it was nice to switch off and use something different that was even more lightweight and smells like cucumbers. Hey, I love the smell of this foundation. It just smells so fresh and clean and it makes everything feel lighter. It's already so lightweight, but the smell makes it feel lighter, lighter weight. Does that make sense? Probably not. So I'm bouncing that into my face with the good old beauty blender. I used to use brushes, but now that my vision is getting worse, sometimes I find that it's streaky. A beauty blender, you can never go wrong if you're visually impaired because you literally just pound it in like this. Every pound is the perfect amount of product and you can build it up as you need to go. But pretty much that is it. I got my first coat on. Now I can go in with my mirror and see, ooh, why my mustache doing that to me? A little bit of coverage over the stash. A little bit over here. You see I'm always making screw faces. Them wrinkles though. Like I told you, you can still see it's peeking through. I'm not looking for the flawless, perfect makeup look. I'm just looking for done enough. Highlight your bridge of your nose. I'm trying to do all of that. I just started contouring two weeks ago, okay? That's already a lot of work. Girls that spend all day on their makeup, props to you. I ain't the one. My favorite new step to do, I've been resisting contouring for since it came out. Cause I'm like, Mm. You know, my family's blessed me with the high cheeks, so. How do you do this again? Like so. I think this color's a little light for me, but it actually works out better because when it comes to blending, you don't want anything too dramatic. I'm just gonna put a couple dots on top. Switch and flip. When I was buying this, I'm an idiot. I didn't realize that the bottom half is a brush. So I spent a good 20 minutes 
looking at all the brushes Sephora collection had to find the perfect brush to work with this. And Mario already thought of that. He already gave us one. Blend it in. That's why I like that it's so light because if it was darker, it'd be more severe. I talked to you guys about Insecure. This last episode, episode nine, had me out of sorts, okay? I was Lawrence Hive until a couple nights ago. Why did he have to go do that? That was not the right time. And then he tried to start smoke with Nathan. If I was Nathan, I would let go. I see in the timelines, a lot of people are saying that Issa's gonna end up single. Probably, I think that's what this whole series is about is her learning to love and accept herself, not chase mandem, although Daniel was it. We need him to come back. The same way Dro came back last episode, we need Daniel. It says a lot about Lawrence that he needed his friend. I forgot his name. It starts with C. The one that does the most. You know who I'm talking about. He needed him to tell him, yo, you never fought for Isa. Five seasons of our lives. And Lawrence has always just been laid back. Next up is a little bit of blush. This is NARS. It should be Luster. Yep, it's Luster because Lester is barely used and Torrid I've had for years and years and years. I probably shouldn't still put that on my face. <laughs> I love NARS blushes because they are really light. You could build them up. And as I said before, being visually impaired, since you can't see as well as you used to, it's easy to have a heavy hand. So at least when you're using something so light, you can kind of be like, is that right or nah? But see, a couple flicks of the wrist and we're good with it. This Becca highlighter, do they even make these anymore? They are my favorites. This is in the color Topaz, which is also my birthstone, Scorpio Hive, where you at? Take my highlighter brush from MAC. I've had this for years. I remember, I don't remember where I was working when I bought it, but I was like, can I afford this brush? I've never seen one like this before, but I think it'll be good for the arsenal. I'm so glad I bought it. Touch the high point of the cheekbone ever so lightly in a V shape, down the nose to kind of finish that contour although it doesn't really look like much of a contour. Underneath the brow bones, even though I have some hairs coming out, I should be highlighting that. And then I like to highlight the cupid's bow. I think it's a nice touch, especially on a gloomy day like today when I'll be filming and the light won't be quite right. You need to add a little accent and a little bit of dimension back to your face. Start talking more about Insecure. We're gonna start doing our eyes. I love another Mario product. This is his, I don't know what to call it, but it's an eyeliner pencil and it has a brush on the other side, I'll show you. So I angle my brushes like this. I know it looks a little weird, but this way I can feel what I'm doing versus see it. Cause even though this is 10X, my vision has gotten so bad so bad that I can't even really tell. And sometimes I'm sure you can tell that my eyeliner is not matching in the videos. So I'm basically tracing the underside of my eye and allowing the feeling to guide me along the way. See? And then with this, I know you're not supposed to pull because wrinkles galore, but I do it anyway, because if I don't, mess galore. So this one we're gonna do the other way around. Lower lash line first. I don't know why I always do the left side opposite. And then kind of pointing up and under the lash line. You wanna drag it out? Mario thought of that. He created a little brush. So if you can't see like me, all you gotta do is flip it and reverse it. Just pull it back, pull it back. And look, you gotta swoop like that. I couldn't even see what I was doing, but I could feel it, I'm telling you. Mario is a master. So you're just gonna drag it. And like so, you got a little cat eye, little wing liner situation going on. You could always, of course, do it the normal way like this, but mm, these days, I don't fool with that. Mascara is my favorite thing. It just makes the eyes open up. You look way more alert than you probably are. It just does everything that needs to be done. We're going in with better than sex because it's an oldie but a goodie. I keep coming back to this. Alternate between Pat McGrath's Dark Star and this one, they're both really, really good. It just depends on which one I feel like getting. Jeff gifted this to me and I was like, perfect. This is my ultimate mascara anyway. It does everything I need it to do and it doesn't clump, which is super important. I can't walk back from clumps. Once my eyelashes clump, it's one and done. I don't have the ability to see to declump spider lashes. So it's better it just doesn't happen. If you are visually impaired and you wanna apply mascara perfectly and you can't see well, what you're gonna do is 
wiggle and work it up. Wiggle, work it up. Wiggle, work it up. Mind you, when you do this method, you're more likely to get some stuff on your upper lid. That's why I don't really wear eyeshadow anymore. It's just too much to have done the nice eyeshadow look and then just have a big clump of mascara and you have to wipe it all off anyways. I just keep everything simple these days. The less steps, the less mess, trust. Angle it diagonally to get the inner lashes. You're feeling more than anything. I can't see these lashes anymore, even with this mirror this close. So I'm just going to kind of shoot up until it catches onto something. It must be the lash. One and done. Now I can kind of see, because they're coated, lashes on the right side and the left side for some reason. Haven't you noticed that too? That your lashes are longer on one eye than the other and they're more fuller too? Why does that happen? We need two more seasons of Insecure for the characters to truly develop. Molly's plotline isn't hitting the way that it should be. I just feel like everything got smushed in a couple episodes. We didn't really see how she worked on herself to improve herself, to be able to take in Torian or Tarion or whatever that guy's name is. And with Issa, every episode she seems to be more problematic. Like she's grown a lot, don't get me wrong. But this has caused a lot of trauma and drama. I was fully expecting her to throw the baby again. I can't believe she put that scene in. Uh, brows, okay. If you want your brows to pop and say, wow, not shock brows, but just wow brows. You're gonna take Benefit Precisely My Brows. I love me some Anastasia Brow Wiz, but that ain't got nothing on this. Especially if you can't see well, you're gonna need something that's super, super precise and thin lined. This is the Patrick Ta Clear Brow Gel. I'm not messing with the brown one. I have enough brown colored brow products. I figured let's just get clear because on the days that I'm super lazy, I could just go like this. That's enough. What is that thing called? Microblading? Pfft, who needs that? Not I, said the wolf. Sprayed it off camera just to wet the solution up. I remember the first couple times I was using it, I'm like, how am I supposed to get the product on the spoolie? Oh, wet it with Fix Plus. Okay, I see you. I see you, Mr. Ta. I used to do this more intently before, but as time goes on and vision wanes off, you get less and less patient. So all of this stuff usually takes me about seven minutes right before I film. But since I'm talking and talking it through with you guys, it's gonna take a little bit longer. Love doing Vlogmas this year. There were some times when I got hella stressed because footage was messed up. But overall, I think we did a good job. Which video was your favorite? Let me know down below. I'd love to know because some things I do want to carry on throughout the year and make a mainstay on my channel. But if you don't like it, there's no point in me creating it, right? So... The trick to perfect brows is the shortest flick of the wrist. I used to think that you wanna like draw it. Mm -mm. Cause when you zoom in with that camera to make sure that your face is laid properly and you see your hairs that you thought you were drawing all the way up here, no, just no. So short flicks, stopping before you think you should because that's probably where you should be stopping. Gotta Kung Fu those hands, cross them like so. And exact same super light flicks going in the direction. When you get to your arch, you can hear it. I think I told you guys that in the last makeup video. Not only that, you're just gonna follow it like an N. Just follow it like an N. Flick, flick, flick. Kelly needs more play. Tiffany's gonna have another breakdown. She doesn't wanna go to Denver, let's be real. I don't even know what's in Denver, but them boys fighting over barbecue. I said, this is so unnecessary. Oh my gosh, that episode made up for the last eight, which were kind of slow. I know people were really disappointed. I got the point of just trying to wrap up a lot of loose ends with the conversations they were having. <sighs> I feel like episode nine could have been episode five at the same time. We have a lot to cover that I don't think we're gonna be able to cover in half an hour next week. Just an extra step. What I like to do is take colored brow gel and this helps to blend any of the strokes that I might have done wrong and also darken up the lash. You know when you're doing your brow pencil, you're actually just darkening in between the, the brows. You're not darkening the brow hairs. Why did I call them lash hairs? You know what I'm trying to say. That's it. I'm not a beauty vlogger. I'm just showing you how to do your makeup when you can't see. I'm just combing this lightly through and if the Patrick Tall wax wasn't enough, any little strays are gonna be 
set in place. It comes full circle back to the lips, finishing with this. This is milk tea. Everyone was raving about it, so I'm like, let me just see. It's a really pretty pink color. I thought it would be too light for me, but because it's so sheer, and I think it has hyaluronic acid because it really smooths out the lips. This is where it's at. Those are all my tips and tricks to do your everyday makeup as a visually impaired person. The more vision you have, the easier it'll be, but the more intentional you'll be as well. So sometimes not seeing well is a good thing because you just don't care the way you used to. One's telling me in the comment sections I look crazy, so I must still be doing a good job. But up here, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, tap the like. Let us know down below what your tips are for doing makeup. And until next time, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed. Happy holidays. Love and later.